Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Today, Emilian Gray is training us on how to harness our energy for greater success and well being. I've got a couple of questions for Emilian so that we can get to know her a little bit better, uh, not as a professional, but as a human being. My first question is this. Emilian, what is the best decision that you have ever made? I really believe that the best decision that I ever made was to actually study coaching, studying what I'm going to be teaching today, because it's truly allowed me to understand uh, myself better. Because I always say this, in order to contribute to anything, to anybody or whatever we're doing, we have to be able to you know, understand us and who we are. And that's part of the presentation. I'll talk a little more about that. So this journey about under studying coaching or emotional intelligence or energy management are some of the best decisions that I've made in my life. Mm, great. Uh, now, something that's perhaps really personal, what is your favorite way of relaxing? Two things. It's either uh, hiking. I love hiking or meditating. I also I'm a meditator. So it's the either one. And actually hiking and meditation actually goes very well because sometimes I do walking meditation. So yes, it's those are the best way for me to, 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 to relax wow. and empty my head. It's strange that you would say that because just yesterday I was introduced to the whole concept of walking meditation. I, see? I've never heard of it before. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, participants, would you uh, please type any questions that you might have into the chat? And then I'll pose them to Millian during her training. Uh, before I go to bed tonight, I hope to send you a link to the recording of this talk. But nevertheless, I encourage you to take notes anyway, because the very act of taking notes will increase what you're going to absorb. And I believe the increase is as much as 30%. Emilienne, are you ready to rock the stage? Let's go, let's go, let's go. And let me yes. just put it over again. I'm all about energy. So I'm gonna do a little bit of movement to raise my energy level. I'm ready, let's go. And you take it away, do your thank thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So first of all, I would like to welcome everyone for joining us. It's always very exciting for me to share this uh, knowledge because I think it could benefit everyone. And uh, you might you know, retain a little bit or as much as possible, but I, I, I guarantee that you'll walk away with uh, some takeaway. So I like to start also by saying that this presentation is for business leaders and entrepreneurs who really want to become dynamic, motivational and inspiring leader. So if you are one of those people, you are in the right place. Now, I know that you want to become a great leader. And when I talk about leadership, it's not necessarily leading a folk, but it's also yourself. So, but for that, you need to master your energy and your emotions. But the problem is many of us are not even aware of the impact that our, that our energy and our emotion has on our performance and our well-being. So my intention, again, is that by the end of this presentation, you will have one or two takeaways that you can start implementing right away and set yourself up on a path to great leadership, again, for yourself, your family, or your team, everyone around you. Now, I would like to start with this quote that kind of sums it all, is that your foremost job as, the, as a leader is to take charge of your own energy and then to orchestrate the energy of those around you. That's from a book called Primal Leadership from Goldman Boyarsky and Mike Key. Maybe some of you have uh, read that book or heard about that book. Excellent book to read if you have not. So now I like to do a little bit of uh, housekeeping is that, you know, we all are home. I know for many of you, it might be already dinner time or after dinner, we, there, there's a lot of distraction. So, just kindly for the next 60 minutes, you know, if you could just, you know, focus, spend some time with us. 
And then, you know, if there's dogs or babies around, you know, maybe you, yeah, keep them with you, but as long as you can stay focused. And one thing that I love to, I would love to ask you is like, if you are dressed from the waist up, please turn off your, turn on your camera. It's always good. It makes it a lot more engaging when we can see one another. So, you know, as long as you have a t-shirt or something, up, turn it on. It would be great to see your beautiful faces or those that I can see. And also, um, if you could have a, a pen or a piece of paper handy, because there's going to be some little exercise that it might be great, as uh, Roger mentioned, not only taking notes, but also play along with some a few little exercises that I have uh, as part of this presentation. Now, I think we've talked with some of you, but I always like to know where everybody is from, everybody that's joining us. So if you don't mind putting in the chat box, just so, like, where are you tuning in from? Just so that we get a sense of who is everybody and uh, where you're tuning in from. Just quickly, I know there's a video being produced here. So for people watching the video it may not be possible, but it's always good to know. Just a couple of, I uh, see. I will come out in Vancouver, Red Deer, Alberta. Nerva, Tampa, Florida. Uh, did I say Red Deer? West Vancouver, Abbotsford, Los Angeles. Los Angeles is your next door neighbor. That's right. Well, and good. I, so that's that's good enough. So we are people from around the country and uh, around the world. So maybe some didn't didn't want to share, but Hills, all good. Oregon. So again, here we're gonna talk about leadership, but again, when I talk about leadership, it's really not about just a team, leading a team, but it's about leadership, leading ourselves as well. So now I would like to ask you, when you think about leadership, what's the one or two, one word, not even two, what's one word that comes to mind? Put it in the chat box or write it down on your piece of paper. And maybe Rogers, you can tell me some of those words that we're seeing that people think of when they think about leadership. Crickets so far. Crickets, come on, people. Come on. There's gotta be one word that you think of when it comes to when you think about leadership. Inspirational, leadership That's right. influence, knowledgeable. That's right. Motivator. That's right. Good. All our great attributes uh, of a great leader. And again, oneself. Legacy. Uh, before great. Now, before we continue, I'd like to take just about two minutes or even a minute and a half to tell you a little bit about me. And as you already know, my name is uh, Emilienne Gray and uh, also known as Coach Emilienne. And I am a confidence and leadership coach. I've been an executive leader for over 20 years as company like MTV, VH1, Revolt, just to name a few. And uh, throughout my career, I've uh, developed campaign for brands like AT&T, PepsiCo, uh, 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 um, Mountain Dew, again, just naming a few, and work with talent from Beyonce to Tony Bennett. And I like to say that I specialize in working with uh, leaders and professionals who want to develop their leadership skills for greater performance, but also impact in the world. And my passion, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, my passion is really to empower people to know who they are, who they truly are, because I truly believe that when a world where everyone have a higher level of consciousness will help us create a better world for all of us. So my hope, my vision is that over the next 10 years is to directly impact a million people and indirectly millions, millions, millions more. So that's all I'll say about me for now. And uh, with that, well, let's, let's dive in. So over the course of this hour, we will touch three main points. One is why you should care about energy. The second is that leadership, as I mentioned, starts with you, each one of us. And the third it will be the key to success in life and at work. And uh, I always like to play, like put a little uh, exclamation point in the chat box if you're really ready to, 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 to go with this message. Tell me yes. Yes? All right. I can't see, but I know you're with me. Now, here's the first little exercise that I would like to do with you. Now, think about, uh, you know, if you can think of someone that you have come across with in your life that you will describe as an ideal leader. What are the specific skills or characteristics that that person has? 
you know, how does this person relate with others personally, professionally, socially, but then also uh, 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 even in their in family environment for those who not, not necessarily have a team? And what does this person does to command respect and admiration? Just put down like two or three words for yourself. I'm not necessarily gonna ask you to share that, but it's just a great time to have a little bit of self-reflection to understand that like, really what do I consider a great leader? And you can hold on to that. And then also have a little moment for yourself and on a scale from one to 10, how would you rate yourself against that ideal leader image that you have envisioned? Again, is for a little moment of personal self-reflection. Right. And then you can hold on to that because again, as we pro progress, you can again see if uh, you know those words that you your vision of an ideal leader match with what I will be presenting in this hour. Now, first we'll start with uh, energy and why you should care about energy. And I'll start with this quote from Albert Einstein that maybe many of you have uh, seen in the past or heard of. And that says that everything is energy and that is all there is to it. If you match your frequency of the reality that you want, you cannot help but get that reality. And this is not physics or this is not philosophy. This is really physics, this is science. And I'm sure many of you have heard that everything is energy. Now, can you maybe guess how many, and, and with that is really say that scientists also told us that we are energetic being, right? Physical objects, and that include human being, are made of subatomic particle of moving and vibrating energy. And that really includes our thought, and our emotions, all that is really vibrating energy. So with that in mind, we really create our reality based on our perceptions and that perception create our energy level. And that in turn creates our lives and the experience as we know it. Now, can you maybe guess how many levels of energy there are? If you can just type a number that comes to mind in the chat box, how many levels of energy do you think we have? Well, what we're we saying, how many? The star crickets, here they come. Okay. Here they come, me. roughly 10 says and Nirmala. Three says Mike, five, uh, five says Mike, three says Ario, uh, 13 says Saul. Okay, Mike, you're the closest with five. There are actually seven level of energy. And those are in direct correlation with seven levels of awareness and also all and the same as the seven levels of leadership. And again, leadership, how you lead yourself, how you lead your team or your family. But again, it's all that is the same, seven levels of energy, awareness or consciousness and leadership. Now we're gonna dive a little deeper now with each of those energy level. So let's start with level one. Level one, actually, I wanted to actually tell a little more when it comes to this, because it, this is important that because this is really at the core of energy management. So energy management referred to both really the act of managing energy, but also a particular and unique form of leadership. Right. So it's, it's a quicker way to really raise your confidence and raise your energetic presence. So that energy, depending on which level you are, could actually work for you or against you. And there's two important factors before we go into each energy level. There are two kinds of energy. There's anabolic energy, which is uplifting, fueling, constructive, and really tends to guide us toward our goals. And there are catabolic energy, which is uh, contracting, it's negative and give us really a limited view of the possibilities that we have. So out of the seven levels of energy, two are catabolic, meaning destructive and negative, and five are anabolic, meaning they're more fueling and positive and really help us. But now we don't have time in this hour to cover it all, but I would need you to understand that 
each of these energy level have advantages and dis disadvantages. So there's really no such thing as bad level of energy, even the negative one serve a purpose at a specific time in our lives. So I wanted to make that clear. And I'll have something for you towards the end that will give you more details and you can understand a little more about each of those uh, levels of energy. So that was an important thing that I shouldn't forget. So now level one, this is the level of the victim. So at this level, you know, you feel lost, stuck. There's a lack, seems that you lack of choice, uh, very problem focused. And, you know, in, in everything that you do, it's just like, well, no matter what I do, I lose. So that would be a, a great example. So, and I'll take a, 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 that example between win and lose for each of those levels. So at level one, the, 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 it's always like, well, I can't win anyway. No matter what I do, I lose. So it's really a level that no one wants to spend much time with. And again, there are moments in life maybe when you're mourning someone, you have a big loss where that level one energy could show up because we need a little more care and attention, but really it's not a place to operate con uh, constructively because it's draining and uh, will take a, a toll uh, even on your health. Level two, it's a level of conflicts and the fire. Here it's about blaming others, finding fault, resisting to any changes. And uh, really, it's really about me against the world, if you will. So at this level is that the attitude might be, I win, you lose. Because again, it's really about, you know, being against everything that is around you and resisting change or everything. And I like to just kind of actually at this point, like, uh, uh, and, or maybe mention, or because we don't have time to be very interactive, but really in our world, in our society today, really around the world, level one and level two energy are the most predominant energy level that we see really all around in our lives, in our workplace, everywhere. And that's also pretty much explain what, why we see everything that we're seeing in the world, the tension, the fights, the wars, because again, level one and level two is really what dominates uh, 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 our world this day all around the globe and uh, again that's why really helping being more aware of that impact being conscious of it could help us make an effort and get ourselves out or helping people around that get out of that energy level now level three is the beginning of anabolic energy so at this at this level it's about taking responsibility it's about forgiveness and it's about cooperation for the sake of uh, 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 moving things forward. And at this level, you will justify or coping. The people that have high level three energy are very great at coping with whatever, whatever situation just so that they can keep things moving forward or making compromises. So in our example, uh, with uh, lose, lose and win, a level three person would say, you know, I win, but then I want you to win as well. But first I want to win and then I'll let you win too. So you see there's there's some anabolic, but a little bit of catabolic, but really it's about also taking responsibility of uh, oneself and then helping others. Level four, it's all about other. This, the others. this is the level of concern. This is the level of compassion, service. And it's a level where you put everybody first before yourself. Can you maybe think of uh, uh, people, some people um, that, ha that may have high level four energy? I'm sure generally we'll think about nurses because they're caregivers or people that work in for non-for-profit organizations. Those are people that have high level of uh, energy for, because again, it's all about compassion. It's all about being of service uh, to others. So in our example, it, at level four, the person will be, you know, I want you to win. You win and that will make me happy. Then I can win as well. But first I need to make sure that you are taken care of, you win. So that's level four. It's really, again, all about others and high level of compassion and service. Level five is the level of the collaborator. 
this year, it's about win-win. It's really some of the best leaders in companies or even in the society show a lot of level five energy because it's all about win-win-win for everyone. It's about uh, making sure that you know everyone has a, 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 a seat at the table because it's about reconciliation, acceptance. It's also a level where you see opportunities with everything that happens. So this is that level where life throws you lemons, you can make lemonade out of it. So it's really about turning challenges into opportunity because they see that there is a purpose to everything. And the level five energy also are very inspiring or very motivational. So in our win or lose example, uh, someone with a high level five energy will be, uh, we both win or we don't play this game. As you can see, it's all about win-win. Not just me, not just you, but we both have to win. And if we cannot both win, so there's no point even playing the game. That's level five. So great place to be high level uh, uh, of energy, very an uh, anabolic level of energy. At level seven, uh, six, it's a visionary. Here, it's that level where it's like synthesis. It's about connection. It's about intuition. You can tap into, into your intuition or uh, very inspirational. Uh, this is the level where, you know, you, you, you can connect with to everything and everyone. There, there's no separation. At this level is that we are all one. This is the level really where, you know, there's no separation with, with anything, even your, your, your pen, there's a, there's a connection there again, because everything is energy. So this is a level two where, you know, people that have high level of, and uh, uh, level six energy are very uh, creative. They can actually tap into that creative genius. And that's why uh, they're visionary. And uh, in our example, uh, level six will be, we all always win. Is it so because there is no at this level, there's no such thing as bad because it's all one and the same win or lose is the same. So we all always uh, win. So that's a uh, level six energy. At level seven, this is the level of the creator. This we 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 rarely no one actually operates at level seven, but we can learn to tap into that energy level to really have those moments of like enlightenment. So that's the level where you see the highly, highly spiritual people, Buddha, Jesus, Father, that's the level where they operate. But we can tap into that, for instance, when we meditate those moments, that's when we actually can access to that level seven energy. And at that level, now an example, there's really no win or lose. There, everything is, is just ease, right? Because it is just life. Everything is the way it is. So win or lose have no meaning because it's all just words that human create because everything is just pure creation and is the way it is. Now, let me take a deep breather here, and I'm sure you have probably have some questions, so please tap your question in the chat box and uh, answer those questions later because uh, there's a lot of information there that I'm throwing out. But um, again, I'm going to have a little gift for you to uh, dive a little deeper, but these are the seven levels of energy. Now, to kind of like bring it home and simplify it, you can think of it like almost like, you know, the lead meter of your sound system or the sound frequency of the song, right? Your energy level can go up and down depending on how you're perceiving or responding to what's happening to you or in your life at the moment at work or at home. So your level of consciousness or awareness is really determined by your view of the world. So managing your energy becomes like very simple. It's really about being very conscious. And that's where that awareness or consciousness come to play. It's really training yourself to really constantly being aware of what am I thinking? So if you can watch your, your, your thought and watch the impact of the thought, because you can choose the same way, you know, you, you might have thought of something negative that kind of drained your energy and brought you to that place that was not as constructive. You can switch that. It's a conscious decision that we can all do at any given time, but we tend to forget, to forget it because we're just operating like a robot and think, oh, this happened to me, but it's a choice. We have that choice. So really, it just to remember this, 
that each thought that you entertain has an energetic consequence. Each single thought that you entertain has an energetic consequence. They're either going to uplift you, move you forward, or they're going to pull you down. So again, it's all about keeping that. I always like to say, watch the thinker, watch what's happening in, in your mind. And, and then a, a great analogy that I like because I love music and, uh, and uh, I had to slide Jimi Hendrix in here because it, it's, it's, it's very simple. It's a very simple concept, but it's not easy to apply. It takes practice, practice, practice. You may not achieve it in, in one day or two days, but the more you do it, the more second nature has become. And I'd like to say, because Jimi Hendrix didn't wake up one day and say, I'm gonna become this guitar god. No, but he was like glued to his guitar. He would practice at any given time, sleeping with his guitar, eating with his guitar. And then ultimately he became this master that we know of him. So, so have, you have to think with your, how you observe or catch your thinking, practice, practice, right? And make the conscious effort that I do not want this negative thought because it's draining me, I'm gonna to choose to change it. Put some good music on, start dancing, or read a good book that uplifts you, go out for a walk, whatever you need to do. But we'll talk more about that in a second. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, and that leads us again to our second uh, key point that we want to talk about here is that leadership starts with you, as I just talked about. You know, what's your thought? Because the truth is this, we are all leaders. We are all leaders, either by default or by choice. So as I mentioned again, you are responsible for your thought, your feelings, and your emotions. You know, and there are direct and there's a direct correlation between what you think how you feel and what you end up doing or the action that you take or what the action that you choose to not take. So it's that positive thought will lead to, will lead to positive emotion and positive action. Negative thought, negative emotions, and then negative uh, uh, action or maybe no action at, at all. So there's that real direct correlation with that. And a, a good analogy that I like to take is that, you know, a, 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 a pregnant woman with a baby in her belly, you know, the well-being of that child is in direct correlation with what the mother will do during the pregnancy. If she takes good care of herself, eat good food, put good, good nutrient in herself, chances are the baby will get, be born a strong and healthy baby. But if it's like the contrary with alcohol, drugs, or all the bad stuff, well, that baby will have not a lot of chance to survive, or even if they survive, might have a lot of health challenges uh, at a very young age. So there's that direct, direct connection between the two, your thought and your well-being and how you feel and how you perform. And uh, another analogy that I like to uh, take here is, you know, we've all been in airplane where the, the flight attendants will say, you know, uh, in case of turbulence, please make sure you put on your mask before you even help your child. And that's, again, it's like, you need to take care of yourself before you can effectively take care of anybody else. In order to be a great leader to yourself or to people around you, you have to be able to lead yourself. If you can't lead yourself, if you can't be that person that you're actually even proud of, chances are you're not gonna be an effective leader for your family, your kids, or your employees. So starting with yourself is the number one priority to any great leader. So, and I like to say that there are two things that really rules our lives and, our, and that means our, our thought and emotion and all that, that's our beliefs and our values. And we have all heard that beliefs are self-fulfilling, right? If you believe that you can do something, you, you're gonna pull that energy within you, things are gonna happen and you're actually gonna achieve that. And if you believe that you can or you're not strong enough, whatever, that also is going to be self-fulfilling. So belief are so critical. And that's why I always encourage everyone to question your beliefs. And many of those beliefs, we know that we have acquired them when we were kids, through our family, our friends, our idols. So sometimes we end up believing things that we don't even know how we got that belief, but we just it's just in us. 
and we're not even questioning it. So I always encourage everyone, question your beliefs, specifically the, the limiting ones, those that are kind of holding you back and question, uh, why am I believing that? Could the opposite be actually true? Can I do, where does that come from? So just not believe it and go with it, but question them and actually sit with it and make a conscious effort to choose, choose the, the opposite if it's a limited belief. And then the second thing that control us, our lives are our values, because our values control our decisions and the decisions that we make. And those decisions really are what make our lives and what, how we act in our life. Decision makes our lives and as we experience it. So it's another exercise that I encourage people to do is to sit down and write down your values. What are your values? Because again, many of us don't even take a moment to have that, 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 that understanding about oneself. What do I value most in life? Is my life or everything that I'm doing now is in alignment with my values? Because again, if you don't make a decision, life will decide for you. So understanding your values, your beliefs and your values are key element to really understanding who you are and controlling your energy level and your emotions. And this is uh, like a very simple, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, graph that really, or uh, uh, yeah, slide that explain how belief translates into how we show, show up in different situations. So you think of something and that thought lead to a specific emotion, as I mentioned, and that emotion will lead to a specific action or a lack thereof. So really your thoughts, feelings, and action can either set you up for success or hold you back. It's as simple as that. Your thought, emotion, and action, those are all things that can serve you or hold you back. Again, all led by your beliefs and your values. Really? This is a little you open yes. for a question. Oh, yes, I can take a question. Uh, I'm um, not getting the connection between energy and beliefs and values okay Be beliefs and value are driven by our thought right and emotion right and in the beginning i said that scientists and physicists also show that as human being everything we are we, we are energetic being and our thought and emotions are also energy have energy every thought that you entertain has an energetic consequence does that make sense? So when you think of something, depending on if it's a good thought, you're going to have positive energy. If you think of negative, you're going to have more of a catabolic, destructive, draining energy. Okay. So, so by asking us to review our values, we, we are projecting some form of energy, which hopefully is positive if our values are positive. Yeah, I mean, value should be positive. Why you want to have a value that is not positive? Then you heard, then I think, you know, you, 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 the value should be values that serve you, that, that, that fuels you, that, you know, that brings you in alignment with, with how, I, I mean, I've rarely seen people have values that are negative. So it's more about, the, it's being clear. The value helps you identify what matters most to you in your life, but your belief uh, really was then will you know either serve you or not serve you because you know there are some people who believe that they're ugly or they believe that no matter what they do they cannot win and those are beliefs that are catabolic meaning destructive right so if you believe that so you can also counter you can look at believing that and then to kind of say what are my value actually what I value so you start thinking that well, I value authenticity I value creativity I value love I value respect then then you can start thinking well how does how that reflect is that reflecting really my belief and then you can start changing no I don't want to believe that because again the belief is just something that we have acquired and we just go with it but again the same way we believe that we cannot do something we can decide to believe that we can do something. It's a mental exercise. That's all it is. Okay, thank you. No further. You're very questions. welcome. You're very welcome. 
So here, this is a very a, a little light moment, especially for my ladies or also men, but I choose the picture because I loved it, how our emotion could sometimes get the best of us, right? We have an event, we have something, we go to the mall and we wanna just maybe buy a pair of shoes or a handbag or a dress. And before we know, we lose that rationality. And then we walk out of there with like 10 shopping bags because again, our emotion got the best of us because we start thinking, oh, you know what? But this is also great. Oh, this might go with this, this other dress. Oh, I have something else. So we really get carried away by our emotion if we don't control them and just start acting in a way that we did not intend to act. So again, rather than walk out with what you came to the mall for, for one item, you walk out with 10 items. That's how our emotions sometimes just this is a light way of you know expressing it but again how emotion can get the best of us and make us you know do things that are not for, done for rational reason but more for emotional impulse because we all have those emotional impulse right so that's again that and i know every lady and gentleman on this call could identify i know i've done it so it's nothing that i'm judging that is bad but again it's just to show that how our emotions sometimes get the best of us. So another uh, aspect, and I talked about it a little bit, that has a big impact uh, uh, on our energy is motion, right? I say emotions, I like to say that it's energy in motion, right? So, and human beings are actually built to move. We're not, you know, we're not, we're not supposed to be just sitting down. So we build to move and we generate more energy when we do physical exercise, right? And I'm sure many of you have experienced, right? That, you know, you're not feeling good one morning or you feel kind of sluggish and then you go out for a walk or a little jog and all of a sudden ah, you feel so much better. And that's because our physiology how impact our energy level. So if you want to radically change your physiology, you change your thought. You ch if you want to really, start, if you change your physiology, it will change your emotion, it will change your thought, and it will actually even will change your decisions and the actions that you make. Because after that, you have an energy boost, you feel so much greater, better, and then you also make better decisions and take better action. So, and then science actually shows that, and again, this is all backed by science. Science shows that when we have low level of oxygen in the brain, it actually has an impact on our decision because having energy in our brain is critical for the, the functioning of our brain and our body in general. So less lack of energy in the brain brings to poor judgment and poor decision. So physical exercise, it's also critical for well-being, for thinking better and making sounder and better decisions. So I'm kind of like, so with all that knowledge, so what should be your strategy? What should we do to really, uh, you know, keep that energy level? And, you know, if I, I would like for you to just kind of take note of what's resonate with you or, or with everything that I've said, how maybe like examples in your life that you think, oh, maybe this happened and I could have made the decision if my, actually my energy level or my thought in that moment were a little more positive and not blaming someone, which is a level two energy where you become like, oh, I just sad, the bastard, just angry. So where, and then you make certain decision that you may later regret. Because the key is this, to, to become really aware of your energy level, where you spend most, because we all have default, you know? So there are seven levels of energy, but when, there's an assessment that I could, I'll touch upon it later, where you can actually see what's your default energy, a uh, uh, level of energy. And then if it's at a level one or two, you wanna do everything possible to get out of it because having a level one or level two uh, 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 as your default energy, that means you either consistently feel like the victim, like everything is happening to you, you can never win, or your, your whole life is about fighting and combating and that's draining. You can't sustain it in the long run if you're consistently finding yourself having to fight or, uh, or be, putting yourself in a situation where it's, it's like it's all, always a battle. It's not sustainable. So I like to say that when to, to really manage your energy, it's really about taking a moment 
no matter what happened, taking a deep breath, really breathing. It's also the act of breathing alone can slow down like all those, you know, catabolic thought that you may have. Take your moment breathing and, and, and start thinking like, what am I thinking right now? What is bothering me? How is that aligned again with my value? What do I believe that make me react in, in this way? Because at the end of the day, you know, when we start being mindful of our interaction and we can relax and breathe, chances are we're gonna acknowledge that, well, you know, it's not that deep. It's not that serious. I can choose to not give this matter that much importance because it is draining me. So it's really all about taking a breather and being aware of the, even the role that you're playing in that, in that situation. Because again, it's not all about the other person. It always takes two to tango. So level two, we quickly blame that other person, but it's also to acknowledge that, okay, what, do, what role do I play in this situation? What is my intention or what was my intention? Because the your intention is really what fuels uh, that your belief or everything that you end up doing. So it's really about being very mindful in any given moment, especially in those moments where it is, it, there seems to be a conflict and stopping and breathing and analyzing you, the situation and your part in that specific uh, 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 situation. And with that choosing, again, it's a conscious decision, choosing to pick an energy level, three, four, five, six or seven that serve you rather than spending too much time at an energy level one or two that drains you and really uh, holds you back because that's really ultimately that's what it does. Emilian, time for a question? Yes, sir. This is from David. I literally deal with multiple medical issues that cause me to be chronically exhausted no matter what I do or do not do. I am physically and mentally drained all day long, every day. How do I even conquer that? I guess my question is, how do I manage energy and energy is there? Energy is there. What's the person's name, please? David. David. David, you have energy. I, I know it sometimes seems like woo-woo and light. It's about your thought. So I would love to encourage you, David, to not constantly think about the, your, your illness or everything. It's about believing, you know, believing that you have within you what it takes to conquer that. So it's really about training yourself to think positive, no matter how drained you are, you go for a walk, you choose to listen to good music, watch movies that are funny so that you can laugh. Laughing is one of the best medicine. So distract yourself from what your physical uh, 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 situation tells you because you feel drained. Yourself. But your mind, you can, you can train your mind to say that to go there. Again, it's a choice. So consciously, consistently telling yourself, I am well, I, you know, I can be well, I can be who I want to be. And, and doing activities, again, if you're just consistently reading books or watching funny movie or listening to music, whatever hobby, whatever you have, I wanna ask David, what do you do that brings you joy? What is the one thing, David, that you do that brings you joy, that enlighten you? And whatever that is, do that thing religiously do it uh, like nonstop no and if you're physically drained but your mind can you can you can condition it's about conditioning you can condition your mind to get away back with that by really choosing what what you what you put in your mind so even if physically you feel like oh i'm drained and i say but you the man say but I, I i'm an energetic being i can i can pull that energy within me i i, I you know i i, I you know say like I am, so now I'm gonna get into the universe because there is really, there is really no difference. It's just one of the degree between us and between what's in the universe. So you can tell yourself, I am powerful, I am strong. And there's one thing that I like to share and I'm sure I really say that in this, it's like you consistently have to repeat to yourself, I am whole, perfect, strong, powerful, harmonious and loving. I am whole, perfect, strong, powerful, loving, harmonious, 
and happy. Let me say that again. I am whole, perfect, strong, powerful, loving, harmonious, and happy. And you know, as you say those words, David, try to feel those words. Don't just say them as words, but feel it. Feel it because you know the universe is that feel those words and make it a mantra. Make it a mantra. Every single time, like you lay in the bed, you're walking, you're saying, you feel, whoop, I'm losing my headphones, sorry. <laughs> I get excited, <laughs> you know? Just repeat that. Those are like simple words that, and those words have energy and high level of energy, powerful level of energy. So repeat that consistently. And so you start living those words. It works like magic. I am whole, perfect, strong, powerful, loving, harmonious, and happy. And feel it as you say those words. Another I would question. love to hear from you in a couple of weeks or months and how that works for you. But even mm-hmm. doing that could shift your, your, your mental energy. And that will have an impact on your physical energy. Question from Viva. I am a manager and handling a team of 25 people. How do I maintain the same energy with low performer? You set the example. You, you, you create that field. As a manager of a team, you're the one who actually is there create because they all look up to you, right? So the key is really about embodying what you would like to see around you because they feel it and they feed off of you. So if you have low performer, it's also about communication. I always like to say well, with a team is allowing them, giving them the space because I say this, everyone that's in your team is there for a purpose, is that they have a reason why they're there. They just didn't, yeah, they might not be performing. There's a reason why they have that low performance and maybe because they're not feeling good about themselves. Maybe they have a lot of self-doubt. Maybe, you know, they have conditions at home or at work that is impacting because they haven't figured out a way to leave that out. So it's also about creating that, 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 that atmosphere, that environment that allow even a low performer to feel accepted to feel welcome because I guarantee you even a low performer once they start feel like they're being welcomed they're being accepted they're being valued as human being even though they start going above and beyond to perform better once they're a low performer feel the trust that you have in them that you, you really believe in their in their capability as human being and you allow them to 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 and it's also about Reevaluating is that person is in the right position or in the right role? Am I asking? That's why it's so important to understand the people that we work with, especially when we're a leader of a team. Am I actually utilizing that person to the best way possible? Because maybe that's not. I'm going to accept someone that is there. Uh, maybe we haven't we haven't really positioned them in the best way possible to deliver the best work possible. So I like to say that definitely it's about allowing even a low performance to feel accepted, to feel valued, to feel like they, they belong to this team. And eventually either they're going to come and they might express something and you're going to understand what is holding them back, why they're not performing. And it's really about also sitting down with them and say, you know, let's, let's have a talk. I'm here for you. I know you're capable of, because if you hire them or maybe you inherit them, but it's about also having that honest, that transparent conversation, specifically with the low, low performer and making them feel valued. This, that, you know, appreciation of someone could go a long way. It, like I said, even a low performer, once they feel like we care for them, we value them, they will put up, put the work, they will work a little harder because they feel appreciated. And that will raise an energy. So as a leader, you, you, you create the energy for the team because once you start showing with that anabolic level five mm-hmm. energy, then everybody's like, oh, wow, they love you more. They're more excited about it. They feel inspired. They feel motivated. So it's also about motivating and inspiring the team, you as a leader. Again, like I said, maybe I'm not sure when you joined, but again, I started with that slide is that the, your, your foremost job as a leader is to own your own energy and then orchestrate the energy of those around you. So it's really start by questioning, where is your energy level? 
as a leader and you know and you want to make sure that you have an anabolic level of energy four or five because if you're there one or two the victim or the fighter or leading by you know you have to do this i'm the boss and you this it, 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 that's not going to work so it's really about creating that environment where everybody feel welcome, everybody is motivated and inspired. And as a leader, you set that example. So it's about starting with you and checking your level of energy. Uh, Viva has responded with, but sometimes in this position as a manager of 25 people, we need to make hard decisions. So how do you handle that? It's, it's about co communication. I, I, I totally understand that. I've been a manager of like maybe not 25, but like 10 people. I totally get it. It's about having an honest and candid conversation. And, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but it doesn't have to do with them personally. It's again, we try, we have that communication where, okay, what's holding you back? Why aren't you performing? Uh, you know, is there some situation that I should be aware that you feel comfortable sharing? And if you're not sharing, that's fine, but it, it's clearly impacting your performance at work. And unless you can, manage and deal with that, uh, uh, that situation so that you can actually be present at work and delivering, or we then will have to you know, part ways. And I think uh, anyone will understand that because listen, we dare to deliver work. We're not just coming to sit and collect a paycheck. There is everybody, everybody has their piece of the puzzle to deliver. And if someone cannot deliver it, and even with the support that is provided, because I always say it's about, have you done everything that you're doing? Have you supported them? Have you given them a chance to explain maybe why they're not performing? Maybe because sometimes have we made sure as a leader, I always say this, the job of a leader is not so much to say, I'm the boss and say, but it's really to make sure that each one of your employee, each one of your direct report has what they need to deliver the work that they need to deliver. So it's also about asking them from time to time, do you need anything? Am I, do, is there something that you're lacking to be able to deliver? Is there a training or is there a tool, whatever that may be? So it's really about probing, probing that low performer and asking, what do you need? I'm here to support you. I want you to succeed because if you succeed, the team succeed. So what do you need? And also it's really frank uh, 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 conversation. And if you have done all that, providing them everything that they need to succeed and they're still not succeeding, then maybe they're not, it's not a right fit because that happens. Maybe you hire them with an expectation or somebody else hired them. And if it's not the right fit because that job is not what they made for, because sometimes we put highly creative people in some uh, anal you know, very analytical dry and then we expect them to perform. It's, they're not gonna perform well. So it's also about making sure that we're putting the right people in the right uh, uh, functions because you know, we're human beings. So it's about knowing how we you know, position people and make sure we position them to succeed based on what works best for them. Again, you're not gonna put a creative people, a creative person to handle your, your accounting or be the, the books. They're, not, they're going to have a hard time succeeding in that role. So it's about also about questioning all those and understanding who are the people that, are, that, are, that I'm working with and are their best fit for the role that they have. No further questions. All right. Let's keep it moving. We're almost there. So the last uh, part is actually here. The keys to success and well-being. And it's pretty much like a summary of everything that I just talked about which is that like emotions are really an integral part of our lives and work. Emotions are the product of our thought and are controlled by our perceptions, our beliefs and our values, right? So if you're excited about, and that's kind of like relate to what I just talked about, about you know, uh, uh, that person that has the low performance person. So if you are, let's say, uh, you know, a, a salesperson and you're excited about the product that you're selling and you're going to market and you're going to, you know, be very excited. You're going to be able to engage your prospect. And because you're so passionate, your emotions are high and excitement about it, then you're going to be successful in that job. But if you, you know, you have to sell something that you don't believe in, you know, you think it's crap. 
and you just find yourself like, but I have to sell it. Yeah, you're going to be a low performer. So it's really about having that connection between your emotion and then what, how, how you're performing because they have a direct impact. And being passionate about something or motivated about a project or whatever makes it all a lot easier, right? So it's the key to how we succeed in what we want to do. And there was this, this, um, this research um, by this uh, uh, European company, it's called uh, uh, Genos International. And they study actually emotion because it's a part of that emotional intelligence. And they said that, and they have this key, this insight that I love is that the way you show up determine the way uh, uh, people engage with you. And the way they engage with you will determine pretty much, no, no, let me read that. The way you show up determine the way people feel about, about you. The way you show up with your energy and the idea is positive, uh, anabolic, uh, determine the way people feel, people around you. And the way they feel determine the extent to which they want to engage with you. And that in turn impact pretty much everything in, that, in the outcome of that relationship. So again, it's, it's how you show up first that will impact everything in the relationship that, we, that you have with people around you. And there's that, that's really, again, scientifically demonstrated. So let me, there's a question? No further questions. So, and this is again to say that, you know, work alone doesn't lead to success. Right, so it's not just like you come, you work, you work, you may not necessarily succeed. So managing your energy and thus your emotion at work is critical for career or personal growth. You know, because emotional intelligence, understanding your emotion and the impact that they have in yourself or even the people around you, as I just said, will really determine how people will perform or if they're inspired, if they, and that's why again, my, the, the manager of the 25 people team, that's why I really encourage you to say like, what are my emotions? Because you may not think about it, you know, and you probably, because we don't all walk around thinking, how am I feeling right now? We just go. So it, it's, and specifically as leader, it's so important to check ourselves and say, how am I feeling? Am I bringing it in the room where people start feeling like they don't want to engage much? Much because that has a huge impact. Again, the way you show up determines the way people feel and the way they feel is determined how they engage with you. And that has a huge impact in the outcome of that relationship. So, and there's this very simple graph that kind of show it up, so it shows it, is this, you know, on the left, you have your energy level from low to high and the bottom, your level of success from low to high. And the yellow arrow is really the level of success. And as you can see, the higher your energy level, the higher your level of success, right? And so energy management is really the key to success and well-being. Being able to really be conscious and aware and you know, acknowledge and choosing to shift that energy when you're in a place where there is not constructive, constantly changing, will have a huge impact, not just on your success, but also your physical and mental well-being, right? And it's really a proven method, energy management, to identifying who you really are and who you choose to be, more importantly. You know, by understanding that, because again, we have a choice. I always like to say I do tech talk, which is thought, you know, energy and choice. We have the power to choose who we want to be. It's not just it happens. So the higher your energy level, the greater your confidence and well-being and success. Right. So my key statement really for, for all of us, not just leaders, is that until you master your emotions and energy, as a business leader or as an individual even, you will find it hard to reach your personal and professional objective. So your form of just should be like really as your, your main focus as a leader is to master your energy and emotion for greater success, not just for you personally, but for everyone around you. And that brings us to our 
you know, little summary that everything. So we cover why you should care about energy. I hope at this point it makes a little more sense to everyone. And that leadership starts with each one of us. And that the key to well-being and success is really about energy management, which is really about managing your thought and emotion and choosing an energy level that serve you rather than marinated in that energy level one or two that is not constructive. Because again, we have the power. The same way we're thinking about you know, those negative thought or draining thought, we can change them like this the moment we're conscious of it. But it's about practicing, practicing. And eventually we can do it. You say, you know what, I'm sad now. Well, I don't want to be sad anymore. I want to be happy. Yeah, I can be happy. Nothing stops you from changing it. It's a conscious decision. So. So with that, you know, I, oh, I have generally, I have, a, I have a quiz and that's something that we did not build. So this is, uh, you know, just kind of, yes, at this point, uh, yes, I don't have a quiz for you, but I, I, but actually maybe, maybe, maybe I'm just going to, for the fun of it right now. So if I say, um, I win, you lose, what level of energy is it? Put it in the chat box. If I see if you paid attention, I win, you lose. What energy level is it? Two. Very good. How many people say two? And three. Good, good, good. You've been paying attention. So uh, we both win or we don't play the game. Which level of energy is that? We've got a five. Yes. Five. Yes, good, you're good, you paid attention. Um, no matter what I do, I always lose. I lose, I lose, I lose, I lose. What level? One, one. That's right. One. But I win, and then you can win too. Two, three, no. six. Three, 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 three. I win, and then you're three, level three. Okay, now let me do the last one. Um, we always win. Every we win, we all win and always win. Which level? Six, six. That's five. right. Good, 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 good. You guys are great. You got it. So remember, remember that it's a simple because that's really it. All right. So I will close with this quote that I love. That's from uh, Goethe, Wolfgang von Goethe, is that treat people as if they were what they ought to be and you help them become what they are capable of being. That also relate to my manager with 25 people, right? Treat people as if they were what they ought to be and you help them become what they are capable of being. From good. I mean, this is a little testimonial of one of my, you know, my clients, you know, she said a little bit of uh, her experience working with me. You can uh, read it there. No, she's Zoe, a young uh, creative mind, and to now actually move from London to, to Berlin. When I start working with her, she was a little like, oh, I don't know what I want to do. I want to be in London. I want to be like, so we went through the whole coaching exercise energy. And uh, I believe that she has, she's on a better path now. But so that was a comment. So now what's next? Uh, you know, if... Um, You've enjoyed, uh, you know, uh, this hour with me. So I have this offering for you. So I, I mentioned earlier that there's an assessment that actually will help you identify what's your default energy level. That means what's the, the, the place where you spend most of your energy. And once you know that, because you really cannot change what you can see. So you need to be aware of okay, where's my energy. So the assessment is called the energy leadership index assessment. And I offer that with a 90 minute uh, 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 um, disc, you know, debrief, which you know, we go through your assessment and I give some initial tip on how you can start practicing and shifting that energy level. And uh, I'm offering that generally I will do this assessment for 349, but for this group only, I'm offering that at 249. So the assessment, it's a scientifically based assessment and a 90 minute, an hour and a half debrief, and then a session where we can talk a little more about your specific energy level, because it's very unique to each person. No two people have the same 
uh, uh, assessment. So it's very unique. And you can see those bars on there. So those are the different level. In this case, these assessments show high level one energy and very high. So this cannot be healthy for someone to have that much level one energy. And then the second is level two, which is so, and they have very little of anabolic energy. So the, the whole work is to have more of the level three, four, five energy. So that's one. And then I am, I also offer a seven week, seven module online, excuse me, online course, which is the art of authentic leadership, which again, deconstruct everything because this hour was just like a bigger overview, but there are several modules that really goes each module in specific aspects from energy management, emotional intelligence, uh, 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 removing the barrier first, identifying and removing the barriers to success and leading and managing a team. So all that within a seven week, seven module course. And for everyone who is attending this uh, webinar, I have a 20% uh, uh, discount for the course. The course is uh, generally like 1997, but I'm offering a 20% discount and that's the code. And for those who wanna work closely with me and like more personalized coaching, I'm always happy to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you're interested, you know, you can reach out. So please, um, Roger, uh, oh, and I mentioned that I have a, a little gift for you. So Roger is gonna put in the chat box, a link so where you can download a, a little cheat sheet. And that on that cheat sheet, I'm actually going a little deeper on all across all the seven levels of energy. And on that, I also talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each energy level. So you can spend time with it and we'll give you certainly more information than what I have covered uh, during this hour. And um, yeah, with that, uh, if there are any other questions, so uh, what question do you have? I want happy to answer more questions if you have, if there are any that we have. Emilienne, I'm sorry, we we're all out of time. So okay. I, we have to wrap up now. Uh, on behalf of EIN's 75,000 entrepreneurs, 99% uh, of whom live in North America, I thank you. Uh, the whole question of, Ellen, of energy for an entrepreneur is just crucial. Without energy, there is no, there's no gas in the tank. And right. gas is what we need uh, to keep us going forward. So thank you for lifting the veil. And My pleasure. In very clear terms, the whole world of energy. Thank you. My pleasure. It was a great pleasure.